Good afternoon, Chairman Cruz, Ranking Member Corona, and members of the subcommittee. I'm Erin Neely Cox, United States Attorney for the Northern District of Texas and Chair of the Attorney General's Advisory Committee. Thank you for inviting me here today to discuss the Justice Department's effort to counter violent anti-government extremism. For me, it's a topic that hits close to home. A little over a year ago, in June, a gunman clad in military gear and carrying an AR-15 style rifle opened fire on the federal courthouse in Dallas, which houses not only the federal judiciary, but also my office, the U.S. Attorney Office, and many other offices. The sudden violence ripped through the morning just as we were arriving for work that day. Several of my prosecutors and others were caught in the midst of the attack. They resorted to hiding behind cars in the parking lot, and one was pushed into a doorway by an FBS officer just as the bullets whizzed past them both. Our office will be forever grateful to the FBS officers who engaged the shooter, ending the attack before innocent lives were lost. To this day, we remain rattled by the gunman's anti-government motives. He chose his location for a reason. A courthouse is one of the essential nodes within the body politic. It's where laws are upheld, where justice is meted out. To target a courthouse and those who work there is to target the core of our lawful society. And Dallas is no stranger to assault on the rule of law. Three years prior, just blocks from the federal courthouse, a gunman targeting law enforcement ambushed police during a Black Lives Matter protest. Five officers were killed. 11 other officers, excuse me, 11 others were injured, including nine officers. This was the deadliest single incident for law enforcement in the United States since 9-11. That day in July 2016 is certainly something etched in our memory. Just as the bullet holes still etched in the federal courthouse's facade from the shooter last year remind us daily, anti-government fanaticism did not emerge with the 2020 protest. But as our citizens have organized lawful demonstrations across the country following the tragic events in Minneapolis, anarchists continue to exploit this lawful First Amendment activity as a shield for their violent behavior. Somehow, the notion of committing violence in the name of an anti-government dogma, be it Antifa, Boogaloo, or any of the other espoused ideologies, has been gaining traction at an alarming rate. Unlike the lawful pro protesters who demonstrations they undermine, these anti-government extremists aim to tear down the rule of law in America, not improve it. In fact, resorting to violence, they are drowning out the voices of the protesters that this country wants to hear. We've recently seen anti-government violence making headlines all across the nation. Just a few examples. In Seattle, during an anarchist occupation of the Capitol Hill area, an individual allegedly set fire to a police precinct. Thankfully, protesters rushed in to help extinguish the blaze. In Portland, a would-be anarchist outside the federal courthouse allegedly attacked a deputy U.S. marshal with a large hammer, landing blows on the officer's neck and shouting expletives as other deputies had to pull him off. On the courthouse barricade were scribbled the letters A-C-A-B, an acronym for all cops are bastards. In Oakland, a violent extremist allegedly used a peaceful protest as a cover to murder an FPS officer stationed at the federal courthouse firing directly at the officer and his partner before taking off. In response to this type of violence, Attorney General Barr directed U.S. Attorney Craig Carpenito for the, East, for the District of New Jersey and me to lead a task force to combat violent anti-government extremism. Working in close collaboration with the FBI, the task force aims to investigate and prosecute extremists of all persuasions. We will follow where the evidence leads us, investigating any person or group who plans to commit or commits violence in the name of anarchist ideology. Our goal is to fo focus on cases where violent extremists commit federal crimes and seek ways to disrupt and prevent these criminal acts before they harm Americans. Of course, let me be clear with this final point. Adhering to a repugnant, repugnant ideology is not a crime, nor is expressing those beliefs. The right to freedom of speech is enshrined in our First Amendment. But committing violence or inciting violence in order to further that dogma is a criminal act and is one that we should all take very seriously. Extremist violence endangers our community. It endangers our law enforcement. But as importantly, it also interferes with citizens' right to speak freely and assemble peacefully.
I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you, Ms. Cox. Mr. Kuchin.